Can you even handle the level of drama I'm about to spill? Okay, get this. Imagine being brutally dumped by your very first record label. Ouch! Talk about a cold industry welcome. But the plot thickens. You didn't just fade into the background. You brought a new life into this world at the oh-so-young age of 19. Imagine the roller coaster of emotions. But the universe wasn't done with you yet. You found yourself at absolute rock bottom, homeless, with your back against the wall, facing the darkest moments one can imagine. And just when you think it can't get any more dramatic, you're contemplating a tragic exit. Can you believe all this turmoil befell just one person? Yes, y'all meet Tanya Blunt. Now, hold your pearls, because here's the jaw dropper. Who's at the center of this whirlwind of negativity? None other than Sean Combs, a.k.a. P. Diddy. Now, doesn't that just add a whole layer of intrigue? Tanya Blunt, a dynamo from Washington, D.C., hailing from the DMV to be precise. This teen sensation took the music world by storm in 1994 with her soul-piercing hits like Hold On, Hold on baby. and Through the Rain. I'll be here. Tanya's destiny as a songbird was written in the stars. She knew she was destined for the stage from the tender age of eight and had big dreams. Theater, movies, music, you name it. Growing up amidst the vibrant hustle and bustle of the district, creativity was in the air she breathed. She polished her talents at the esteemed Duke Ellington School of the Arts and even rocked the scene as part of the all-female go-go band Young Jungle Boogie. Yes, folks, this girl was marked for fame from the start. Now, fast forward to the era of Blunt's Big Break. Her tape landed in the hands of Big Break talent show judges with none other than Natalie Cole. Although she didn't win, her jaw-dropping performance caught the eye of Hush Productions, the masterminds behind music legends like Freddie Jackson. My mind. They swept her off her feet and pitched her demo to Polydor Records, now Island Def Jam Records, where it landed on the desk of the one and only A&R guru, Leotis Kleiberg. Needless to say, she landed a record deal right away at just 16. She was grinding away on her debut album, and out of the blue, she scored a lead role in the mega-hit movie, Sister Act 2, where she performed His Eye on the Sparrow with the iconic Lauren Hill. Get this, Tanya wasn't even good at acting, but Whoopi Goldberg had to write in her character because she wanted her voice in the movie somehow. How did that whole rendition of His Eyes on the Sparrow come about? Well, Lauren and I actually auditioned in New York, mm -hmm. and I wasn't, you know, acting or anything like that, and she had just come off of The Young and the Restless. So what we ended up doing, the director liked both of us so much, uh, Ms. Goldberg and Bill Duke at the time, they flew us out to Los Angeles, and they gave me an acting coach and gave Lauren a vocal coach. And I guess two, three weeks into it, Ms. Goldberg was like, listen, you're not gonna get the role, the lead role, but I want the world to be able to hear your voice. So we went over to her house. Thank God. <laughs> and they, Goldberg, Whippy Goldberg, not the way, if you didn't catch that. Yeah, uh -huh. And she was so sweet. We went over to her house, and Bill Duke and Whoopi Goldberg and Mervyn Warren, uh, who okay. is the, the, the guy who um, produced the song, they came up with a rendition for Lauren and I to sing it, and that's how I ended up getting a few lines in the movie and being a part of that, that scene. So Girl, thank you, Miss Goldberg. Yeah. Sister Act Two rocked the screens, and Blunt's debut album, Natural Thing, it's just a natural thing, dropped in 94, setting the charts on fire with not one, not two, but three Billboard R&B singles. She even bagged a nomination for Best New Artist at the Soul Train Awards. But just when she thought she was riding high on the waves of success, Polydor pulled the rug out from under her feet. Ouch! Two years later, she's juggling diapers at the ripe old age of 19. A bit too much for a teenager, don't you think? When asked what was the biggest challenge she encountered as a youth, she said, Becoming a mother at 19 presented me with a critical choice to pursue my career through touring or to dedicate time to my son. I aim to protect him from the rigors of life on the road, which is why he last joined me on tour at just four months old. 
Now in his 20s, he is unfamiliar with the touring lifestyle. Fast forward to 96, and she signed with Bad Boy, hoping to turn the tide. She had the opportunity to work on an album under Bad Boy Records with Diddy himself taking a hands-on role in its production. Tanya was thrilled by Diddy's guidance and involvement and felt optimistic about the project's future. However, her excitement turned a disappointment as Diddy's interest waned, eventually abandoning the project altogether. In an interview with the Washington Post, Tanya shared how the project was left to stagnate, turning months into years of waiting. She felt betrayed, believing Diddy had deceived her from the start, a sentiment echoed by her manager, who described their experience as getting caught in Puffy's vortex. The situation deteriorated further when Tanya realized the music she recorded wasn't what she wanted. Despite recording 50 to 60 songs at Arista Records, she felt boxed into a style that didn't represent her. She yearned for musical diversity, questioning why she couldn't blend the various genres she grew up with. This creative clash led to a deep frustration, culminating in a dark period where Tanya contemplated ending her life, overwhelmed by the presence and feeling of betrayal. Her ordeal with Bad Boy Records didn't just affect her career, but also her personal life, leading to a 15-year hiatus from music. It wasn't until 2016 that she began releasing music again, this time with her husband. Another day, another situation. Tanya's story sheds light on the darker aspects of the music business, highlighting not just her struggles, but also those of other artists like Craig Mack, who experienced similar setbacks under Diddy's management. These narratives paint a complex picture of talent management, creative control, and the personal toils of industry pressures. Daddy's love and Diddy's influence is akin to a black hole, obliterating numerous careers in its wake. His Midas touch universally turns everything to dust. It's hard to find a single tale of an artist under Bad Boy Records ending on a high note. Once a skeptic of curses and dark rituals, I now question the aura surrounding Puffy. I'm eager to hear your thoughts on this. Do you side with Tanya's accusations of Diddy's underhanded tactics? Or is it merely a case of sour grapes? Whatever your thoughts, facts remain. When almost every artist on your roster ends up penniless and fighting for freedom, something smells fishy. With lawsuits stacking up like pancakes, it's no wonder folks are starting to believe that P. Diddy is actually the devil in disguise. Only time will tell, but one thing's for sure, the drama around him is not ending anytime soon. Back to Tanya's wild ride. So in 2000, she's all geared up for her grand comeback, right? But guess what? It was like trying to teach a fish to ride a bicycle. It just didn't work out. And as the years went by, life threw her curveballs left and right. She even found herself crashing in a friend's basement so she wouldn't sleep on the streets. But hold on to your seats because here comes the plot twist to end all the plot twists. In walks Michael Trotter Jr., the man, the myth, the legend. And let me tell you, it's like something straight out of a rom-com. On August 28, 2010, at precisely 3.45 p.m., Trotter and Blunt locked eyes in the middle of a field at the Love Fest in Laurel. Trotter was performing on stage and was wearing a sweater in 100-degree weather. Despite the small audience, he was giving his all, pouring his heart out with every note. Tanya was immediately smitten, hook, line, and sinker. She couldn't shake off the feelings she had and kept wondering, who is this guy? She was drawn to him like a moth to a flame. And you know what they say about love at first sight. Sometimes you just got to go for it. So what does Blunt do? She takes matters into her own hands and tracks Trotter down like a detective on a mission. Call me, she tells him, sealing their fate with a single phone number. Trotter was homeless at the time and Blunt was crashing in a friend's basement. It was a match made in heaven. But the surprises don't stop there. Turns out, Blunt had a little secret up her sleeve. Despite doctors telling her she couldn't have any more kids, she made a bold declaration to Trotter. I'm going to give you a son. And guess what? Six months later, they were expecting. Bound together by their love for music and God, and a surprisingly similar dance with the dark side, Tanya Blunt made a comeback and joined forces with her husband, Michael Trotter Jr., to create magic as the dynamic duo, The War and the Treaty. They were 
on top of the world playing the Grammys and booking gigs left and right. Why you gotta be so cold? Finally, their hard work was paying off and they were ready to take the music scene by storm. But then, bam, the pandemic hit, throwing a curveball no one saw coming. Despite the chaos of 2020, they managed to drop a bombshell on the music charts. A song they wrote and recorded with Zach Bryan skyrocketed to number 14 on the US Hot 100. That's not all. It climbed to number 14 in Canada and even snagged the number 33 spot on the Billboard Global Charts. Hey, driver. In a groundbreaking move, the war and treaty made history in 2023 as the first black duo to receive nominations for the Country Music Association Award for Duo of the Year and the Academy of Country Music Award for Duo of the Year. But that's not all. They're also making waves in the music industry with two nominations for the 66th Annual Grammy Awards, including the prestigious Best New Artist category. We are here with the War and Treaty nominated tonight. You guys are nominated in the Best New Artist category. How does it feel to be nominated in that category? It's surreal. I mean, you know, I always say God makes all things new. <laughs> and so we're new and it's, you know, we're new to somebody. So I'm very happy that the 10 years we've been doing this, we're able to be nominated as Best New Artist. <laughs> And if that wasn't enough to make your jaw drop, get ready, because an upcoming biopic based on the group's extraordinary journey is set to hit theaters soon. We have a challenge for you. Go and check out the band's music and tell us which you prefer in the comments. Tanya's 90s classic or the healing tunes of the war and treaty? We'll be looking forward to your comments. See you next time.